Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the closet laboratory again. It's where I got my 3D printer. What do you expect? Anyway, so uh, CT Wellington, I hope I said that right, left me a comment. He said, Russ, how did you match the curvature of your helmet when you 3D printed this part? That's a great question and I want to address that. I also want to address how I did such a thing like this. You see how the plastic is curved over top of the battery pack there? Yeah, so I want to address how I did that, how to sort of manipulate prints. Now this is PLA and this for PLA works really well. So if you want to see what the heck's going on with these two, stick around. Otherwise, see you on the next video. All right, well, welcome back. So really quickly, I'll address how I matched this curvature. So this is just a little custom GoPro mount. And um, let me see if I can get you the best angle. You see the curvature this way? This has a really nice weird curve. It's really sharp here and a nice sweep towards the top. And then here's the bottom. And it actually has its own curvature to it. It is not a straight. It's actually a little bit of a, uh, an over curve. And then the tip here, kind of pointy. So it's a really weird one. Now, how did I actually match that curve? That's a good one. So in Fusion 360, there is a thing called Sculpt, and you can really manipulate the surface of something. And that's how I created this geometry. But to get it right, I literally just held it up and looked at the screen and tried to match that curvature with what was on the screen. So that's hard to do because you gotta have to scale everything. So if you get everything scaled right, you can hold an object up there and look down it and try to get that curvature. And I did the same thing with this way, but that was a little more challenging. I just, you know, measured the best I could and then eyeballed it like this. Now, if you're making something, let's say, with this geometry or some other very odd geometry, such as this back here, this battery pack, um, yeah, you should be able to see that. You see that weird, it's black, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a very strange curvature to the body of this battery backup um, and what I did is I just scaled on my screen right scaled it to the right size by zooming in and out until I got it to the right scale and then I took the battery pack and I just held it right up against there and just followed those you know adjusted the curves until I matched something that was relatively close and then the only other thing you can do is just 3d print it and see if it fits now on the front here it was really, really close, but not quite close enough. And the plastic, um, I used this, what is this, VHB 3M tape. Um, really nice adhesive. This is what GoPro comes with their original equipment. And so it didn't stick very well to this 3D print because it has this, it has this texture to it, right? You see that texture? And it doesn't really stick well. So what I ended up doing, which is also what I did here, I'm going to actually show you exactly what I did. All right, so I have here a pen torch and a little arc lighter. Pretty fun, aren't they? So what I did is use this little mini torch, little pen torch. All right, get it set right. Now you can use a heat gun. You could even use a hair dryer. However, I like using the torch because I can get it really hot really fast without melting the whole part. So if I took a heat gun to this and tried to get this really hot, it would not work very well. Because what would happen is the whole part would melt and you couldn't just form the part you want. So let's get a good close look at the edge of this. See that? All right, it's not very smooth. It's got all those ridges on it. So what you wanna do if you use a pen torch like this is you wanna go real fast and you do not wanna sit in one spot. Let's just see if I can get this on camera while I do it. So you never want to sit in one spot because that's when you start getting into problems. Alright, so at some point you're going to be able to sort of... Alright. So you got to be careful because this piece is very thin and you can see how, you can see how soft it is. See how soft it is? So you got to be careful with a thin piece. However, you see that glaze on there? So that's how I that's how I ended up getting the surface real smooth. 
And then for a piece like this, if you wanted it to cool flat, you could find a flat surface. So I'm going to use my mirror as a flat surface. So I'm going to heat this up. All right, I'm going to get that just slightly melted. Then I'm going to go over here to my flat surface and I'm going to press it against that cold flat surface. All right, and now you can see that glossy surface. Now that tape's going to stick really, really well. Now there's two reasons why this was helpful because in order to match the curvature of the helmet, let me put this away. All right, so if you look here, uh, let's see, this side's probably better. You can see how the plastic is kind of smushed right here. You see that? That's actually because I took a torch and I heated the back side of this. I pressed it against the helmet and then I held everything where it felt really nice. And so it formed really, really tightly to the surface of the helmet. And it was smooth because the helmet was smooth. So that's how I matched this perfectly. Um, but like I said, holding it up and looking at it is how I tried to get it the first jobby. So let's talk about this back here. So Carlos Arthur left me a nice comment and he said, Russ, don't put such heavy things on your helmet. Um, so thank you. I did end up and was planning on getting something a little smaller. So this in total weight only adds about five to six percent in total weight with the GoPro, the microphone, and the battery backup. So in total weight, I've only added about five percent. Uh, the helmet is kind of heavy already. So let's go back to this. You see how I hot glued around the edge of this battery backup? It's pretty well square all the way to the top. So I ended up just hot gluing it. I put double-sided sticky tape everywhere on the back since it was flat, and I hot glued the front. So I was going to basically do the exact same thing with this battery backup until I realized that battery backup has a really nice curvature. So I ended up just heating the plastic very lightly, enough to make it a slight gloss. You can see how glossy it is there compared to the side. This is Matter Hacker's red uh, translucent PLA, by the way. And um, so I just heated it and slightly molded it over the edge, and then when it cooled, it's in there. So if you design something even better than what I did here, you could probably make it so you could snap this in and out with these little pieces because of how it's being held in here. Um, I hot glued this on the back side in one spot, so I probably can't just pull it out of there, but I bet you I could pull it out of there if I didn't um, hot glue it in there. So just a little tip. Um, all right, so real quickly, I've got this old part. This is actually an LCD mount. So, 3D printed, and this actually goes on the front of the rail stock here when I switch it over to the Duet. In the meantime, I've got this little piece, so I'm just going to demo this folding over of the edge. You really don't need to get it that hot, and like I said, you could probably use a, a hair dryer and work really well. This is actually double layered, so this might not work like really, really well, but just a little bit of heat. All right, not too much, because then you warp the whole thing. All right, and then you can sort of, it's popping because of the, the way I've got it. It's actually two individual layers. But there you go, curled that edge on there. So it's pretty easy to, uh, to manipulate. I like the torch because I know how to use it because I've been um, surfacing polycarbonate and plexiglass and other things with it. So I kind of know my, I kind of know what to do with it. And what not. But yeah, I mean, you can mold this stuff really nicely. If you get your hands wet, cold water first, it won't hurt you very much. So yeah, that's basically what I did on the helmet. I just curled it over. But you can just, you know, polish this stuff and do all sorts of things with it if, you, if you're careful. I should probably put this torch away. Yep. Um, right. And really quickly, I'll show you what I got here. So I got the GoPro mount. I got the microphone, and then I've got a wireless Bluetooth, okay, and it is well, I don't know where it is, but the other half of this gets connected to uh, I can connect it to my phone, or I can also connect it to my wife's helmet, which will have just a microphone and a Bluetooth module on it. So that's what this little addition is on here. It just sort of hangs on there. Um, if you want to see how this comes off, I can show you. The way I've designed it, 
is this is a regular GoPro clip-on. However, for the bottom, so unplug the headset and unplug this, and this just slides off. Okay. So I've got a regular GoPro mount here, and I've got an actual clip-on one here. So I could mount a camera here if I wish to, without the battery pack, but I just 3D printed that to fit in here and then slide into the right spot. And then this basically just holds it from falling out. So, simple, works well, and I like it. Yeah, pretty sweet. So now I can uh, make phone calls if I really need to or want to on long drives or something like that. Distracted driving is not a good idea. I will not be using my phone while driving. I will set that all up and then head out. Talking to myself, might as well talk to somebody else, but yeah, 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 I know, there'll be a few out there. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? All right, well, hope you liked this little video, and maybe it was interesting to you. Let me know down in the comments if it was helpful, and yeah, looking forward to more 3D printing projects. Thumbs up, let me a comment, let me know what you think. See you. Can you hear it? me still fine? Yeah, I hear you. Alright, so everything you say from here on out might be posted on the internet. I am I'll, currently... I'll put it on mute. <laughs> what you say? I'll put it on mute. Okay, good. I'm currently... Uh, I've got my Bluetooth modules connected to my helmet, connected to the GoPro, so... I can hear myself talk and I can hear you talk all recorded on the GoPro footage that's on the front of my helmet. Lovely. So the question <laughs> is, is is this going to work? So this is just a test. I spent too much time trying to get a cable to work because apparently there's some special cables you need uh, with perfectly matched impedance in order for the microphone to kick on for the freaking cell phone is plugged into the Bluetooth thing. Oh my gosh, Matt. Anyway. So the question is, let me put my visor back on. I'm going to start going here. I pulled over so I could get this all set up. So, yeah. I'll move my microphone around. So you might hear a little wind noise. You just have to tell me what it sounds like. So far it doesn't sound like wind. Oh. I can sure hear the engine though. <laughs> is it really uh, low sounding or is it over too loud or is it what? Well, now it's not doing it. It just did it right at first. What do you mean? Did what? I can hear the engine. Oh yeah, because I was taking off. Taking off, man. But does the audio sound clear or does it sound like crap? It's plenty good for you two. Alright, cool. For cell phone use, it's it's still Bluetooth technically, but it's high def. The problem is, is all the other stuff going on. Yeah, so technically on my two hour drive one way and two hour drive the other way, I'll be able to talk to people if I really want to. <laughs>